Hi, Peter here from Wonderstruck, and it's time for a bit more kitchen table science, and this time we're going to make a Cartesian diver. So what's a Cartesian diver? Well, it's really simple. It was invented, so they say, by the French philosopher René Descartes, who was around from about 1596 to 1650, something like that. Um, not quite sure how he made the first one, because to make this one, what you're going to need is a plastic fizzy drinks bottle. Now, they obviously weren't around in the uh, 1600s. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of modelling clay. You're going to need a paper clip piece of plastic straw, preferably see-through, and a pair of scissors. And that's all you need. Okay, first step, all you have to do, cut the straw so you have maybe four or five centimetres, something like that. So I'll just snip the end off that. We won't need that bit. <clears throat> Next, you take your paper clip and you separate out the two halves. So it makes a shape like that. You then bend your piece of straw in half pretty much like that and you take your paper clip and you stick one part up one end and one part up the other like that. It doesn't have to be too neat and you end up with a shape like so. Now for the next bit you need a jug of water. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but you do need a jug of water. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to try and make our diver, which is the thing you've just constructed from straw and paper clips, neutrally buoyant. Now neutrally buoyant means it only just floats. So what you need to do is use the modelling clay, take off a piece about the size of a pea to start with, probably a little bit smaller, <clears throat> and then just squash that onto the bottom of the paper clip. Now, put it in the jug of water. If it sinks, it's too heavy. If it floats with lots sticking out the top, it's too light. Ours is too heavy, so we just pinch off a bit of modelling clay. Try again. Right, that's fine. That's just floating, so the top is just level with the surface of the water. So that's fine. That's pretty much what we call neutrally buoyant. So now we take this out of here. We don't need our jug anymore. And the next step is just to fill our bottle with water. Okay, so the bottle is now filled with water. And the important thing to notice is it's filled right to the top. So the water is actually level with the top of the bottle. You don't want to leave an air gap in it, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then the next thing you have to do is simply put your diver in the top like that, screw the lid on nice and tight, like so. And then the wonderful thing about the Cartesian diver is you can control how the diver actually moves simply by squeezing the bottle. So apply some pressure and the diver sinks, release the pressure and the diver rises. Now if you're really clever, you can apply a bit of pressure and then just release slightly and you can get your diver to actually hover in the middle of the bottle like so. Okay, so, so the big question is, how does this actually work? Um, it's a bit bizarre really, isn't it? Uh, but what's actually happening is the water in the bottle is incompressible. You can't compress the water, at least not with your hands. Um, so when you squeeze the bottle, the only place the water can go is up into the airspace in the straw that forms part of the diver. And as more water goes into that airspace, the diver becomes denser and therefore it sinks through the water. Now, when you release the pressure, the air inside the straw expands 
and can push the water out and the diver becomes less dense and it floats to the top. Now the reason we use a see-through straw if possible is so you can actually see the water level rise, rising and falling inside the diver. So let's have a closer look. <coughs> okay, I'm not quite sure how the focus on our camera is going to deal with this, but let's have a go. So I'll squeeze to bring the diver into shot. Uh, and you might be able to see the water level inside the straw changing. Let's try and get, get him hovering at the bottom. As I apply pressure and as I release. A bit difficult, I think. But there we go. Oh, and one last thing to say is um, the reason I said don't leave an air gap at the top is obviously if you have an air gap there, when you squeeze the water, instead of just um, compressing the air inside the straw, it's got all this lovely air up here to compress, so it's much harder to actually make the diver sink than it would be um, if you have no air gap at all. Now, when you use these, you can leave them overnight and you may find that your diver in the evening was floating merrily at the top of the bottle but in the morning sunk down to the bottom. Now these things are also sensitive to temperature because obviously if the temperature increases the water in the bottle will expand and it can only stretch the bottle so far so it has the same effect as if you were squeezing the bottle. So it will make your diver more dense because the water will be pushed up into the straw and it will sink. So you can actually use these as a very crude kind of thermometer. So there we go. The Cartesian Diver. Very simple thing to build. Hours of fun. You can do this with tape. Carefully just press one end of the wire down on the top of the back of your cloud. You don't pour it out or anything like that. All you do is put the 